Yeah. Our shir is on the Baal Shem Tov. We have, uh, because of all the Chagim, Pesach, and Shavuos, so we had a little bit of a uh, detour, <clears throat> but we were talking all about the Kavanos, nevertheless. So now we're back to the Baal Shem Tov on Tzvila. We have to remember, very what always be, we remember the Mishnah in Pirkei Avos. Al Shlosha Dvam Haolim Omein, Al Atayra V'Al Avodim Ragnus and Sadim. All three of those pillars keep the world up: Torah, Avoda, Gemilus and Sadim. And Avoda means our service to Hashem. That means in the base of Migdash Karbanos. And without the Beit HaMidrash, it means our Tvila to Hashem, service to Hashem. Now, before we start back on the Baal Shem Tov, I want to give you a little bit of an introduction. A very interesting Gemara in Meseches Nedarim, which is, of course, a marshal, but be- behind the marshal is an important principle which has to do with our learning. The Gemara says that the sun and the moon came to God with a complaint. What was the complaint? No, no, no. What's the complaint? It said, there's no din in the world, and if there's no din in the world, we're not going to continue to shine either. This is what they said. Why is there no din in the world? No, why would they feel... Uh... I'll explain. I'll explain. Because... This happened in the Midbar. This happened in the Midbar. When Moshe and Korach were having this machlokas. So the sun and the moon come along and say, how could this be that we have a machlokas and Moshe and Korach and you're not taking Moshe's part? This is before the earth swallowed up and swallowed them all up. But beforehand, how could this be? If this is taking place, it's a sin that there's no din in the world. Because if there was din, there was justice in the world, this could not happen. And therefore, we're not going to continue to shine because we also work by din. And if it doesn't work for most, it's not going to work for us either. We refuse to continue shining. This is what they said to God. This is, of course, a marshal. But Hashem had changed his mind. He brought din originally. And then he brought in more uh, chesed. But where's the, where's the, where is the din? Where is the din? That's what they're saying. She's Bereish, she's Bora Elohim, as Hashem, Eis Hashemai, Be'eis Haaretz. And we know that Shem Hashem Elohim means the midah of din. That's the basis for everything. Afterwards, we added the Rachamim, okay. But the basis for everything is din. That's got to be, you know, the, the, the foundation for everything. And if that foundation is weak, what is we are part of the din? We were created in the world, the sun, the stars, the moon, and we're in head, we're in charge. The sun is in charge of the days, so the moon's in charge of the night. We're our kings, we decided we're not gonna because the din is not working, we're giving up our job either. We're retiring. This is what they said. Well, what is what would din mean to the sun and the moon? That means that they have to function according to the laws of nature. That's what the din is. The din is Elohim, the word Elohim, Aleph, Lama, He, Yud, Mem, is 86 in Gematria, which is the exact same Gematria as the word Hateva, which means the nature. So God put nature, or the laws of nature, into action, and that's the way the world functions. So he came along and said, but this is not the way the world's supposed to function. And you have a fellow like Korach starting up with Moshe. Where is the din? Where is the justice? Justice is also part of the din of the world. It's supposed to work that way. What was Hashem's answer? Hashem took, this is the way the Gemara describes it. He took spears and arrows and shot it at the sun and the moon. And he said, get out of here. Stop moving. You can't tell me what to do. I run the world. I am the real din. What you are doing is only sort of a temporary kind of a din. It's not the real din. The real din comes from me. And I decided no matter what, the sun and the moon have to make their circle. 
and function and enlighten it and illuminate. This is what the Gemara says. Okay. Now we understand, of course, we explain as we're talking, we explain it's all a marshal. That the real din is God himself. He makes the world function and operate. All the other things are just particulars. They're temporary and the superimposed is more important than what's underneath. So we understand that. We understand that we all have to function with din. But as din is something that has a negative side to it. It has a negative side to it. During wars, during wars, when Claudius went to war, what did they do? They used to blow chauffeur. They blew shofar. We blow shofar also in Elul, in Yom Noroi, in Rosh Hashanah. I'm talk as I did. Somehow, there is a way to sweeten and to weaken the laws of nature, that they shouldn't be so strong and so applicable. There are ways to be more lenient. And that's the reason why we blow shofar. And I, I'm just wondering, I was thinking myself when I thought about this the other day, why aren't we blowing shofar now? We're at war. Why should we blow shofar? You have to wait for El to blow shofar to El. Why can't we? Now is more important than El. People are dying. Why should we blow? I thought of myself, I have a shofar. I'm going to bleed, bleed that down. I took on myself to blow shofar every single day to make him talk as I did. We have to do that. Very important. But we have to do it every single day. Not only blowing shoifer, there's other ways to make hamtaka sadin. When we daven, we often have to make hamtaka sadin in all of our davening. That's very, very important. We have to break through the barriers of the din, the strong din. We have to break through, we have to get through and get to the source. And this is what we're going to learn, this is what we're learning about. And I mentioned it in, other, in a previous year from the, from the author of the Baal Shem Tov too. How did Hashem create the world? How did he do it? Well, we don't know exactly how we do it, but with some things we do know. He spoke. Okay. Vayomer Elohim Yehi Or, Vayomer Elohim Yehi Tachi Eretz Deshe, Mehi Ma'oriz Bashamayim, used, that's what it's told in the Torah. You learned last week. Huh? The letters and the Aleph. We're going to come back to that now. Before he created the world, he created first the olive base. The olive base is all din. And what, what makes the olive base din? It's an alphabet. Why is it making din? We have to understand the concept of what din really means. The concept of din is something which is finite. It's something which has boundaries something which has a weight, it has a size, sure has limitations. That's, huh? Barriers. Barriers. That's what din means. Something that has limitations, size, barriers, it has an end. And therefore, the osseous of the olive bays are all din because they're all very finite. They have specific form, a specific uh, shape. And therefore, they represent the need of din. Also the day. Huh? Also the day. Every letter. Every letter of the Alephe is an example of the meat of din. And we use, the, uh, and Hashem used the Alephe to create the world. So it's not just an alphabet. It's not just an alphabet. It is a powerhouse. It is a storage of energy which has to be used in a certain way. If you use positively in a certain way, it can accomplish wonderful things. And the whole world came into existence with the olive base. Now it's interesting, you were talking about the menorah. I heard from Shmuel, we were talking about the menorah. It's very interesting that there are 10 statements of creation. Vayomer Elohim, Vayomer Elohim, Vayomer Elohim. But how many of those are? In the word Vayomer, nine. There are nine Vayomer Elohim in Bereshis, and there's one that's without Vayomer. That's the first statement. 
the first step, Bereshus Bar Elokim Es Hashem Ayim Es Ares. There's no Vayomer. Let's just say Vayomer over there. Why does it say Vayomer? So he talks. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu, according to the Baal Shem Tov, had difficulty understanding the Menorah. Why all of a sudden the Menorah did he have a difficult understanding? All the other Kalim of the Mesa Migdash, he understood. He was clear. He knew how, he knew how to do it. He was the architect. But Saul was the engineer. But Moshe was the. Why on the Menorah did he have difficulty? So he says a beautiful word. He says, because the Menorah is, in, I mean, the creation of the Mishkan is a parallel to the creation of the world. Let's understand that. The Mishkan is a parallel to the creation of the world. So what in the Mishkan parallels the first part of the creation? The menorah. The menorah parallels the first day of creation, and there's no Vayomer there. Because that was something which was held back. Nobody knows exactly how that happened. And therefore Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't, 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 couldn't understand, he couldn't grasp it. Hashem had to show it to him, a picture of the menorah, so that he understood it. Why didn't he understand it in the beginning with? Because the first one did not have an amira. It was not said. It was just a statement of fact. Bereshit's borough, the king of the Shemites, the Aretz, parallel to that in the Mishkan was the menorah. Can we say it's a parallel to the Huli of Rambana? I don't know. Could be. Could be. I, you have to see how it fits in. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's possible. Possible. Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, all right. So we have to do everything we can to sweeten the din. If we want to make headway, we want to accomplish things, we want Yom Naroyan, we don't want to have only the din. You know why? Because if you only did, why did Hashem introduce the Midah of Rachamim that you spoke about before? Why did he do that? To, to uh, diminish the din. Why? Why? Because my understanding is, I don't understand it so well, but it's that the... Uh, the din was too harsh for creation. When you have a din, there's no room for leniency. The slightest mistake means that it's finished. It has failed. It goes out of commission. So if the world would work only by din, and a person did something wrong, he would expire on the spot. There'll be no room for leniency for tshuva. Tshuva, what? What's tshuva? What do you mean tshuva? In Indian, there's no such thing as tshuva. You have one and one is two. If you said one and one is three, so you're wrong and it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's senseless, it doesn't mean anything. Where do you have the possibility of tshuva? Tshuva only can exist when you have a leniency, when you have the midah of Rachmanus, then you can make corrections, you can go back, you can erase your mistake, write it over again. Yes, because we have tuba, we have Rachmanis. But if it had only din, the world, Hashem knew before, beforehand, the world cannot function by din alone. It's impossible. Impossible. Because so, din, so din required, din means perfection. So, so Hashem knows everything in advance. So, yeah, no, so why did he do it that way to begin with, right? <laughs> okay. so, so, can't trick you for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say that when he added the Rachamim, it would probably also was at the same time. It's presented to us that one came before the other. That's the way it's presented to us. But you have to say that, of course, I shall know beforehand. So it probably did both at the same time. Probably did. The, the Din and the Rachamim probably were created together. But the way it's told to us was. The first din, because that's the first pasuk in the Torah, raise the boy Eloi Hiv Eitz Hashemayim as Oretz, and you have later on psukim later on it says Hashem Elokim in the psukim later on, so you see that it came later. That's the way it's presented, but it probably in 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 reality they probably did happen almost simultaneously, or maybe exactly in the same time. I don't know myself. I don't know, but you have to. I mean, I mean it makes sense to say that. It's just the way it's presented that way that you start off with din, but you have to add rachamim so that the din can be the continuous. Because you need the din. You need nature. You need the laws of nature. That's the way the world works. But it can't work only with that, so we add this idea of, of rachamim and including the din too. So the Bashem Tov comes along and says, in our tefillos, we have to do everything we can to sweeten the din. We want to make 
Because if Hashem is going to look at us only with the media of din, who are we to make any requests? We make so many mistakes. There's so many things that we don't do right. Now, even if it's if it's willingly, even if it's unwillingly, it's, you're not aware of it. it. Doesn't make a difference when you function by the media of din. Any mistake means that you are finished. You have failed, and Hashem cannot address Himself to failures. You want to you want to communicate with Hashem. You have to be perfect, and if you're imperfect, so you can't. Uh, you have no one to talk to. I'm not interested in you. You're, you're out of the picture. So we have to do everything to sweeten the din. Okay, now, how do you go about sweetening the din? That's the trick. How do you do that? It's interesting that we just mentioned before shofar. Why does shofar sweeten the din? Shofar is, isn't it, a, it's a form of music. Sound. Sound. So why should that sweeten the din? Why, what happens? Why, why does it sweeten the din? Well, it's very interesting, very interesting. I don't know if I know the answer totally, totally, but I can give you, I mean, based on my, my knowledge that I have you know, accumulated over the years, I can say the following. We have four levels in the spiritual realm. We have four levels. The highest level is called Atsilus. Then you have below Atsilus, you have Bria, Below that, you have Yitzira, and the last level is Asiya. No. What are these levels? These levels are spiritual realms. The highest realm is Atsilas, from the word Eitzel. It's close to Hashem, because it's so high up. Underneath that, you have a lower level, which is called Bria. In that level of Bria, we can have the concept of creating something. That's why it says, Bereshus Bara. Elohim is a shamayim is a Doesn't say Bereshish using it's real, using the word atzilus. No, 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 no. At the level of atzilus, it's all very, very spiritual. There's no room for any solidity up there at all. Total, total spirituality. That's atzilus. You can't have any creation in that level of the spiritual realm. You have to go down, further away from Hashem, further down towards physicality. You're not there yet. But it could be a possibility of a concept of creating something real. That's what we call yesh me'ayin. Something from nothing. Or as they did it in the Greeks, they used to say with a ex, uh, creation ex nihilo. Ex nihilo. nihilo. Creation out of nothing. Something out of nothing. That takes place in Bria, that level of Bria. Underneath that, if you create a something, so that something is only something very, very nebulous. It's something very unclear. There's a something there. It's high, lower than Atsilus, but it's not something that you can define. It's something which is some simple matter. You have to take the matter and you have to form it and shape it. That takes place in the lower level below that. It's, it's, it's zero. Yotzer or you have uvorich or yotz yitzira yitzira. You take something that you have and you take and reform it and reshape it and put it together. Then you, after you've done that, you have to complete it. You have to finish it off. That takes place in the lowest level of asiyah. That's where we are in the finishing levels of the body. Now, now we have the concept of asilus bria yitzira and asiyah. Now let's take the letter, the Hebrew letter, Lashon HaKodesh, Lashon HaKodesh. We have in the Torah the forms of the letter. What would you say the letters are? We already know. The letter is Din. All the letters of the Allah base are Din. Din, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's a shape, it's a form, it's Din. Attached to the letter, we have what we call a Tagin, a crown. On the letters, we have a letters have a crown. There are uh, seven, I don't remember exactly, fifteen or so letters have crowns. Which are the letters? They are with a mnemonic device called Shatnis Gets, Shin Ayin Test Nun Zayin, 
And then Gimel Savi. Those letters have three crowns. If you take this, gets. Gets. If you take a look at the Sefer Torah or open up a Tikkun, you'll see that those letters have three crowns on the left side. I started once from Rabbi Sulevich, get a sheet, it's also crowns. The word, the letter base. The base and the shin. Sharpness, God. And the no, uh, uh, the, so there's a base and a shin. In Bereshit, there's a base and a shin. Yeah, but the, the, the crown goes from the bed. I didn't, yes, there is. So it's more the sharpness. No, no, wait a second. Wait, I didn't finish. Sharpness gets has three crowns okay. on those letters. Bereshit is true. Bedek Chaya, base down Kuf, Ches Yud Hey, one crown. Not true? No. There's no, there's no such thing as two. It's either one or three. One or three. So the base has one, right? Reish has nothing. Uh, Reish, Aleph. Uh, the Aleph think also, I think also has, uh, wait, Aleph? No, it's not. That's an iron. Aleph has nothing. The Nun, the Nun has three. Uh, but that's not in Bereshis. The Shin has three. Then the Yod and the Tuf, they don't have anything. So, Again, we have the letter itself, and then we have a crown which is attached to the letter. If you look in the Torah, you'll see a crown attached to the letter. And then you have two other things besides the crown. That crown is what we call a tag, a tag, it's attached to the letter. Then above that, you have taimim and nekudos. Taimim are the musical notations, the musical notes. The what? The Balkriya reads on Shabbos. Yeah, that's the musical. And also you have the Nikud, the vowels. Then also you have, there are four components in a letter. The letter is composed of four things. The letter itself, then you have the crown over the letter, it touches the letter. Then you have the vowels, the Nikud, how do you say it? E, O, O, A. How do you have to, have to read the letters? You have to have the vowels, and then you have the musical notations. All of these four things have a spiritual level. Compared to what we said before, there are four spiritual levels in the world, Atsilos, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya, that applies to the letter also. The letter would be Asiya. That's the last level. It's an actual le letter that you see on the page. That's Asiya, a letter. Above that, you have the Tab, which touches the letter. Touches the letter. That is a crown which sweetens the letter to a degree. A crown which sweetens it. And then you have a greater sweeteners. That's the Nikud, the vowels, and the highest sweetener is the musical notation. That's the biggest sweetener. So that would be a possible answer to my question. How does blowing shofar sweeten the din? How does it sweeten the din? I blow shofar, so what? Kia, trua, shvarim, trua, right? It's not the names, it's the sound itself that sweetens the din. Why? Because it's the highest of all the four letters. It's the, that which goes into what? Silas, the highest. So if you get so close to Hashem and you're blowing to make contact with Him, that seems to make an impression and it sweetens the lower levels down below. So therefore we have Habtakas Hadin, sweetening the Din through music. And therefore we sing the Kriya Satoru. We don't just say it. You sing it with a certain tune that we have a Masorah given over over the generation, the proper way to, way to do it, but it has a musical uh, connotation to it, and that is what sweetens the dead. Okay, now talking about it here, now I, I, mean, I have to remember, I took on myself that I'm going to blow chauffeur every day to sweeten the din of Claudius, so we need a lot of sweetened din, but just talking to you now is going to, it's a reminder for me to do it, because I didn't do it <laughs> yet. I took, I took it on myself, and we know to do it, but I want to make sure I do it, so talking here about it is going to help me to do it. Okay, now let's get back now to the davening. We want to sweeten the davening. 
Now, where we say is the din and the davening? The din and the davening is in the letters. So we have to sweeten all the words that we say. We want those words to go up to Shemayim and to reach where they're supposed to reach and make changes. We, we're, we're asking for things in davening, using the olive base, the same olive base that you use, Hashem, to create the world. We're using that kli to contact you. And we want you, with a sweetened din, to sweeten the situation down here. What goes up, comes down. If you send up a sweetener, a sweetener is going to come down also. But if you dive in without kavana, you don't, you just say the words, and it, then it's not going to make any impression. What's going to come down is going to be something empty. Like you sent up something empty, so what's going to come down is going to be empty. It won't accomplish anything. We want to send up something which is sweetened, so what will come down also will be sweetened and change the situation down here from din to rachamim. Yeah. When we make the case, Rabbi, you know, we started off talking about justice. We did. Yeah. And he's saying that it's sweet. Now, is it possible that there's too much sweetness? It's very important. Let me just mention one thing. Very important. You brought up a very sensitive issue. What do we do with all our fellow Jews? Our fellow Jews, these are Jews from Jewish parents who don't have the background that we have. They are brought up with complete secularism. They don't know anything. They just know what they're fed, all the garbage they're fed. And they take the wrong path. They're pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel, whatever you want to say. All the people that you know are against what the Torah wants. What is supposed to be our reaction and our feeling to these people? Now, it's very, very important. It's very important. Many people just feel antagonistic to them. These people are destroying us. Our own fellow, we're not talking about the, 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 the Goyim. We're talking about our own fellow Jews are causing destruction. They are siding with the, with, with the Palestinians, with, Stalin, with, with, the, with the Hamas, with, with, the, all the, with all the going all over the world who are anti-Semitic. Our own Jews are, are siding with them. How can you feel anything good to them? My brother said, I'm telling you something now. Take it into your heart. It's MS Lamito. It's MS Lamito. This is the truth. Not because I'm saying it, but I know it's the truth. We have to love every Jew. There's no exceptions to the rule. No exception to the rule. So what do we do with these people? How can you love them? The answer is you have to feel pity for them. But not hatred. You never can hate a Jew. A Jew is your brother. It's your sister. Can you hate your own brother and your own sister? How could you hate your own brother and your sister? Could you hate your father? Could you hate your mother? Are you allowed to do such a thing? These are our own flesh and blood. We're all one Shema. We all come from the same source. We have to feel love, intensive love for every Jew. And we have to cry and, be, and feel pity that they are so off the track. That's the truth. Not to come, all, come out with the same antagonism that they have, we're going to have the same antagonism to them too. Cholina v'chas. Cholina v'chas. You're not allowed to hate any Jew. Even though they cause us... Even so. Yeah. Even so. You cannot hate another Jew. You have to love every Jew and feel tremendous pity and cry for him that he's in such a low situation and he's so off, 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 off the wall. Do everything you can to get him back, but never to hate another Jew. Chalil of Achas. That's what I feel is the Emes Lamito. What am I going to say? No, Messiah. And that's it, do it. That's it. Fine. So they're not going to get away with it. They're not going to get away with it. But the, I, I, myself, I cannot have any hate. I have to have love for every Jew.
criticize them. Huh? And criticize. You can criticize them too also, but add it out of love, out of pity, not out of hatred, not to attack them, not to attack them. To, to do it in such a way that they have, they should, and they will, they will, you think they won't feel, people feel, people feel, they will feel your love and they will see that you're not against them. You're trying to help them, to get them back on track. No matter what they say, what they do, we're not allowed to love or to hate any Jew. Only love for every Jew. I, 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 so this is turning you have a tree, tree crop. Call, you want, call what you want. I know a guy, a very intelligent guy, and he was broke up, he knocks in his back. And then he became friendly, very friendly, he was a bad guy, he was a bad guy. And he learned with him maybe telling us. Then he went and started with the philosoph philosopher who was a pupil of uh, Ravashkinazi. He became the most cruel outspeaker against the Jews. This person learned with the Chabad rabbi. And then with Ashkenazi, Ravashkinazi. Also is Chabad. No, Rav Ashkenazi is the very famous that... Jewish religious Kabbalist from Algeria. Very uh, famous. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not a... All right. And he became category against us. How can you love him? Because if he was a Tinoxian Shva, no, erased him. Erased. I don't know what to say. But, but, but what I said is still nevertheless true. You're asking how. You can how? How can you love such a person who knows? And even though he knows, he still nevertheless deserves a, a category that you still have to love him, no matter what. No matter. You, have, you have love for him and pity for him. That's all. Pity for him, cry for him, daven for him. But you cannot hate another Jew. Every Jew is a Neshama Kedosha, and we all come from the same source. We cannot hate another Jew. We have to love the, the, the best, the most important way. They asked about Shem Tov. What did you contribute to the world? What was your main contrib contribution? They asked about Shem Tov. He said, Avas Yisrael. Avas Yisrael, Avas Hatayra, and Avas, what was the third thing? The three Avas. Avas, the, uh, Avas maybe Eretz Yisrael. I forget the, the third one. He says, that's what my contribution is to the world. The main contribution was Avas Yisrael, Avas HaTorah, and the, the third thing I forget, but maybe, maybe Avas Eretz Yisrael, maybe, I don't know, but Avas HaTorah and Avas Yisrael, I remember those two for sure. And I said, that was my main contribution to the world. Well, learning the Baal Shem Tov, and we can be saying with the Baal Shem I'm sure the Baal Shem Tov could not hate such a person either. Sure. This is a corollary, nicely done, to the first. There was some guy about it. some Jew in Russia who worked for the Communist Party, worked against the Jewish people. When he died, somebody said to somebody, I don't know who, but uh, erase his name forever. And the rabbi or rabbi said, no, we never erase the name of the Jew. Okay. That's it. The rabbi yeah. say that people who are embracing evil become evil. And to say that our response needs to be love. For me, it was just way over the top. I watched these people marching. I got into an argument last night, and I hate them because they want our destruction. They are calling evil good. What my, 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 my dear Hanoch, my dear Hanoch, you could accomplish much more by crying for them and having pity on them and loving them. And you, you know, if you tell them, that I love you no matter what, because you're you're a Jew. You you know you know you, you don't know how many those words can get, go into their heart. You have no idea. If they hear that from you, you know they, they'll be shocked. They'll be shocked, and that could draw them closer to you. They go in the other way. But that's the that's the reaction. That's the what that's this is the Baal Shem Tov's teaching. That's what he contributed to the world to teach us Avas Yisrael. True Abbas Yisrael means under all circumstances, no matter what. No matter what. There's no exception to the rule. We have people like that, you have to have more Ahavo, not less. More Ahavo. But in the Sador, we, we talk about asking God to crush the evil. 
That's not your business. That's Hashem, that's Hashem's business. Our business is we are after. That's our that's our judgment. And, it, and we're asking Hashem to crush the evil, not the, the people themselves. We want to, you know, Hashem puts things into people's minds. Hashem doesn't have to destroy a person. He can just put an idea into his mind that changes the person. Changes the person. I walked into Shul just this Shabbos. I'm the Gabbai in, in my Shul for 50 years. I'm the Gabbai in the Shul already. And I gave a person an Aliyah. And he said to me, how did you know to give me an aliyah? I didn't tell anybody that I needed an aliyah. I said, I didn't know. Hashem put it into my mind. <laughs> Why not? I'm the Gabbai. I want to do my job the right the right way. I ask Hashem to give me the right inspiration, to give the right people the right aliyahs. That's what I did. He, said, he couldn't believe it. He was amazed. He didn't tell anybody that he did. He didn't tell me for sure. Hashem could do the same thing with all these evildoers. All of a sudden, boom, something switches in his mind. And he says, you know, my entire life I've been wrong. I gotta change. It can happen. If you love him, that'll help. It'll help a lot. Pinas was praised that he became a coin. That's right. Okay. All right. Fine. It was something to do there with there was an open rebellion against the Kurdish World War. Pinchas had to act. But it doesn't mean he didn't do it out of love. He could have done it out of love too. Love. Excuse me. So we can do out of love. That's going to be the basis for everything. I, I don't mean I don't mean to kill, but to kill uh, morally. There, there, there's such a thing, and the medicine is known, or that medicine, as a mercy killing. Yes. No, we don't accept. It. No, but the concept. What's the concept? Well, the concept is, if you go to me, the person is sick, and the doctors say there is no hope. There's no hope. It's just a question of days, hours, maybe weeks. There's no cure for this in the world. That's it. And the person is suffering. The person is suffering. So there's two ways you can go. You can be misspelled that Hashem should make a nace and he should get well. Or you can be misspelled that the person should, Hashem should take him. He shouldn't have such suffering. You're doing it out of Avo for the person. You, you, you want to help the person. Why should he suffer so much? That that but at least the, the basis is good. It's coming out of Ava. That's the way it's supposed to be. Not to do it for uh, any other reason. And I'm sure Pinchas, but Aaron Akoyan, the grandson of Aaron Akoyan. I'm sure what he did, he did out of Ava Hashem. Ava no no shadow of my mind. I mean even yeah. No no question. I mean you have to look at the proportion. But I'm sure there was no uh, hate, hatred, no hatred. Something, sometimes you have to do something which is against what you want to do, but sometimes you have no choice. Okay. All right, so this is <laughs> all on Baal Shem Tov of Ava in Tfilo and Hamtakas Hadin. In Tfilo, we have to have Hamtakas Hadin. We want to sweeten the din so that our Tfilas can make inroads and bring down that sweetness back down to the earth. When we send up, come down. So we'll pick up where we left off last week. We don't have too much time, but it doesn't matter. What we spoke about is also important. The Baal Shem Tov, I'm sure, would be very happy with what we spoke about today. So here, take a page and uh, pass the rest. If you don't want to look into the page, pass it on anyway. If you look at the page in front of you, in the top part of the page, it sees there the uh, Talmidim, the Baal Shem Tov, are writing the following base. You see there, Kuf Yud, it says there, Kuf Yud. So it says the following, Shemaiti Mimori. I heard from my Rebbe, Beor sowed Aleph base. Yeah, he, he wants to give us an explanation of the secret of the Aleph base. The etc. He doesn't go into all the secrets that he heard, but he says, in every word that you say in Davani, you hear that, Rabbi Sai? In every word of Davani, you have to have these three elements. Hachna means to be, to be humble, to be humble yourself. 
Havdala means to separate yourself from the worldly foolishness. Vihamtaka means sweetening. Those three things are absolutely necessary in Davani. Now, I will ask you a question. If I think about these three concepts in every word of the Davani, every word, how am I going to Davani? It'll take me to every word, <laughs> take me 10 hours to Davani. So the answer is, you have to have it before you eat. I, I, let's talk with Shmona Esra. Before you start the Shmona Esra, before you want the Shmona Esra, you make a, in your own mind that you hear us all, that Hashem, I want these three elements to be part of all the words that I say. So I'm giving you now like the beginning general formula, and this should apply to all of the words that come out of my mouth. I want all of these three to have these three elements in them. I'm saying it with hachna, I'm saying it out of humility. I, I'm, I, I want to show you by davening to you, I want to be separated from all the foolishness of this world. And also, I want, therefore, a sweetening of the din in the world. And hopefully, you'll listen to what I'm saying. Okay. The problem is Havdola. It's in Havdola? <laughs> all right. You have to be honest. You cannot fool Hashem. You cannot fool Hashem. When you say, when, uh, when um, Yaakov Meir said the problem is Havdola, you know what he was talking about, Havdola? We live in a world which is emphasizing totally, totally, totally enjoyment. Enjoying it. Pleasure. The pleasure principle. When we say uh, this society, and in America we used to say this, or this, it, it's, it's common, we live in a me society. Everything is for me. What's in it for me? This is a, an extremely, extremely great, great deterrent in everything that we do. In everything that we do. Whatever it is, it's eating, walking, talking, everything that you do. I'm now in the middle of an article which I'm publishing in our publication called Ishli Me'eyu. Back in Europe, there was a sefer called Sefer Habrisks, which was written before World War II. This person says, in Europe, in those days, there was a, a great Torah community. There was already, before World War II, there was a lot of, um, unfortunately, there was a lot of um, intermarriage, and there were people who were losing it a lot. But on, this, on the other hand, there were the great yeshivas in Europe in those days. And this person, running from the religious community, says, I'm looking around. I see there are so many people who dive in, and there's so many yeshivas, and there's so many Talmudim who are learning, and I can't understand why the Golas is still going on. We're davening every single day for the Geula, and we're doing mitzvahs, and we're learning, and we're Bechas What's going on? This is his limited uh, I mean, vision. I mean, if you look at the global picture, it wasn't so rosy. But he's a person who's looking around at the Torah community in World War II, before World War II in Europe, and it was a great, great, I mean, uh, I mean, period, in period in, in Jewish history. Where all these great rebellions, where they come from? They came from Europe. Where, where was the Baal Shem Tov? In Ukraine. All these great Hasidic rebels. Most of them were there in Ukraine, in Russia. Where were they all? They were all there. All the yeshivas, the literature yeshivas, the Shemir. The Hasidic yeshivas, I don't know what was doing in the Svartish in that world, in the East at that time, but they were a great Torah community. Is where are all the results? Why, are they, why didn't the Guru come? You know what he answers? Exactly what we just said before. He says, everyone's davening, everyone's learning. But how many people are learning and davening for the Tsar of the Shekhinah? How many people are really interested in the gullus of Hashem, His Son? All the people are at, at thinking about really down deep down is they want to have a better life. They don't want to have all the aggravation. They don't want to have all the pressure. It's all to lighten the burden on oneself. That's what we call the me society. Everything is for me. 
You go and do a mitzvah. What's behind it? What's deep down in your mind for doing the mitzvah? Are you thinking about it? I'm doing it totally because Hashem says to do it, and we're doing it to do for that reason nothing else. Or do you say in the back of your mind, I'm going to benefit from it. I'm going to benefit from it. I'm going to get something out of it. It's going to be good for me. He says, that's the problem. That's the problem. All the Torah, all the mitzvahs, all the davening, it's all for me. Well, how do you expect Hashem to bring the Gula when you're interested only in yourself? Why aren't you interested in the Tsar of Hashem? What about his Tsar, the Tsar of the Shechina? The world the Tsar, why, the whole world is not working the way it's supposed to. Why isn't that bothering you? Hashem didn't create the world to be this way. You know what it says? It's such a beautiful uh, Ramchal. He said the following, listen to this. When Hashem created Adam and Chava, he says, Vayanicheyu began Eden, l'shomra l'avda l'shomri. When Hashem created Adam, the world had to be created. Hashem understands why he had to create a world. In Kabbalah, there's a whole story behind it. There's the spiritual problems in the spiritual world, and that had to be corrected. Well, it's a whole big story about it. And then finally, the physical world had to come into, into existence, and the physical world was supposed to make all the corrections to correct what happened in the spiritual world. The kids, sir. When he says, Hashem put Adam into Gan Eden, la'avdo ulishamra. What does it mean, la'avdo ulishamra? To work it and to heed it. I translate it literally. So Chazal means said, what does it mean? The after means to do the positive commandments. And the Shamra, to be careful not to transgress the negative commandments. That was the reason that Hashem put Adam into Gan Eden. And in Gan Eden, there was no need to shift animals. There was no need to kill anything. Everything was just pulled off the Gan Eden, the trees. And he was so nutritious that he would be able to exist and have a wonderful life without having to kill anything. And he says, the Rabchal, look at the words. He doesn't say, from the Russian of Menucha. Hashem put Adam and Rishon to have a very relaxed, pleasant life in Gan Eden without having to toil without having to sweat to make a dollar. As it says, it wasn't necessary. The beginning, the original plan was that Hashem put Adam in there to be menucha, vayanicheyu, began Eden, just keep the mitzvahs, that's all. Keep the mitzvahs and don't do the averos, and everything will be fine and a wonderful life. Say shalom. Huh? Say shalom. Okay, that's already, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you have to do it. It's it's a it's a concept. The 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 yeah. the, 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 the ra existed, but it was like a chut, a small chut. It wasn't necessary to make it part of your life. It was there. Even if it's the it, he the ara that was created at the beginning was something which is outside the body. It wasn't inside. You didn't have to go to it. If you stayed away from it, it wouldn't bother you. But it was bad. Okay, so that's part of the world. It had to be in that that part of the world had to be there too. But it wasn't internal like we have it now. You're born with the eight star right now. Something else altogether. Yeah. So it's not an easy subject, but in the, we pray for the world to come, and we're told that this will be the redistribution. Of existence. Say that word again. Which word? Re. Yeah. Re. To Wow. the world to come, we're going to get more to. It's just very. Yeah, yeah, but then there won't be any ra. There won't be the yitzhara. Everything will work perfectly. That's what we say. We have a machlokas be shamay be shilat. Right? In all of Hishas, we have Hishamah and Basila, they argue with each other all the time. Hishamah is very firm. He doesn't want to give in. He's holding his sheet. Basila says, no, we can be more lenient. 
We might need it. We could find ways to get around it. How do we push it in this world? I bet you know that. Most of the time, but in the world to come, it's going to change. We're passing like by Shammai. Perfect, perfection, strictness. Why? Because everybody will be on that level. Nobody will need any leniency. Everybody, everyone would be so high up and so perfect that there's not going to be room for leniency. What do we want to base hell? It doesn't, doesn't even fit. doesn't fit. So it won't exist in the true Sarah Amiram. There won't be Tsar. There won't be any Tsar, right? Absolutely correct. So you think it will be a mass meeting? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. It will be, you know, I'm talking to Khalid. Do you think that? Huh? Brit? What do you mean, Brit? What do you mean? It would be a change in our nature. Yes, it be, that's what I said. There will be a change in the nature. Everybody will work on a completely different level of perfection. That's the way everyone's mind will work. There won't be room for the need for leniency. For, yeah. So, so what is the that is, that, will, that is the Shkat, to live in such a wonderful life, like a Malach. Yeah. Before we get into the one of the three things is sweet and low. Which three? Which one? Then we want to listen to the four of the four. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the first thing is that every, every word of davening, you have to have first, you have to have hachna, humility, havdala, separate yourself from all the wants of the world, all the physical desires of the world. You don't want any of that either. You want only to be attached to Hashem. And the third thing is the the, the result is hamtaka sweetening, sweetening, sweetening of the dip. Right, that's what we want. All right, so that's it, by rights of for today. We'll... Thanks, Hopefully, yeah, next next week, I hope we'll get more into the Bashem Tov again into the davening. But what we spoke about today is vital, vital, vital. Oh, it was so important, so important. I thank Hashem for you know, making it happen. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to work out this way at all. Believe me, I didn't know. All right, that's it for the other birthday. Till next week.